<clears throat> Hello, and welcome to Mr. Scott's Everyday Science. Today's episode is going to focus on a simple experiment using only nail polish. Well, and a microscope, too. What we're going to be doing today is using this everyday item to do real science. So, how are we going to use that nail polish? We're going to take this leaf, and we are going to determine the stomata density on the bottom side of the leaf. Now, what's stomata? Stomata are tiny microscopic holes on the bottom of this leaf, which allow for gas exchange. Plants take up CO2 from the atmosphere. They process the CO2 and give off oxygen. That's very handy for us, seeing as how we need oxygen to live. So this technique, very simple, and it's very useful for a plant scientist. So let's get right to it. All we need to do is take some clear nail polish. Um, it's helpful if it has ethyl acetate in it. It doesn't require it. Just about any nail polish that's clear will work for our purposes. All we need to do is paint a little section of the leaf. Uh, probably one centimeter by one centimeter would be a good sample size. That'll make it easy for us to do our count later on under the microscope. So, we paint on a small section of nail polish remover. We let it dry. And then, we just need to peel it off. Well, how do we peel it off? <laughs> do you gnaw it off with your teeth? No. We've got a little tool here. Tape. Oh, good old scotch tape. All I'm going to do here is put this tape right on the dried nail polish. Make sure it makes good contact. <clears throat> and then slowly peel it off. And right there I have a impression of the bottom side of this leaf. Now, to the naked eye, it doesn't look like anything. You put it under a microscope, and you can see very clearly not only the stomata, but individual epithelial cells on the bottom side of the plant, of the leaf. Uh, you can see the stomata and the guard cells, which protect the stomata and regulate the amount of gas and uh, water exchange that's going on through them. As we look at the fossil record of these plants, we see that their stomata density are very low. And through the ages, we can see that their stomata density is getting much higher. What we can infer from that was that during this time called the Carboniferous, carbon was very plentiful in the environment. And plants just didn't need as many stomata to get their required amount of CO2 that they needed for cellular respiration. However, as the environment and the atmosphere changed, the CO2 concentrations began to fall. And this started kind of an evolutionary tug of war with the plants. They still needed CO2, but they had not very many stomata to do it with. And as time progresses in these fossil beds, we can see a clear correlation between the amount of stomata on the underside of a leaf and the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. These studies are important today. They help us gauge the amount of CO2 that a healthy forest can use and utilize. And it also helps us to determine whether two plants of the same type that may have been grown in different areas, uh, what the environment was like for these plants. Was it a hot, dry environment? Was it a, a warm and moist environment? All of those things are hidden right here on the underside of a leaf. See you next time.